Hello everyone, I am Sunalika Ray. I'm the bioinformatics project manager here at Pine Biotech. And I'll be discussing about metagenomics, its evolution, sequencing types, several ways to process metagenomic data to pick the right method. I'll briefly discuss about the two major analyses in order to make you understand how easy the analysis could be. And finally, showcase some interesting visuals that are obtained by running these pipelines that makes biological interpretation easy and efficient. So first of all, to talk about the connection between disease and microorganisms that has been established in the 1800s. These studies provided important information about bacteria function in isolation. However, it became apparent that most microorganisms live in complex communities, many members of which are impossible to culture in isolation. Today, we know that the microorganisms or the microbiota that make up the human microbiome are not just unicellular organisms living alongside each other, but instead form highly regulated, structurally and functionally organized communities attached to surfaces as biofilms with interspecies collaborations as well as antagonisms that contribute to ecologic stability. However, since the 1990s, microbiome studies were significantly advanced through such major initiatives as the metagenomics of human intestinal tract and the subsequent human microbiome project. Huge studies that have been made possible through the advances in metagenomic sequencing. As a result, skin, lung, gut, and even brain microbiota is starting to be characterized. Each new project represents vast opportunities and challenges to determine which microorganisms play key roles in the development of certain environmental conditions needed for healthy function of human organs and which can be harmful to it. Due to the advances in metagenomic sequencing and other omics technologies, enormous database of sequence data from such communities has led to the emergence of computational metagenomics, which can help study the 99% of uncultivable microorganisms in the context of their natural environment. Unlike other omics, metagenomics does not study a single organism, but the whole community at once. A snapshot of a collection of organisms directly in their natural environment. Since the genomes are so diverse, this is typically accomplished by sequencing a specific marker portion of the genome instead of all the genomic material present in a given sample. And why I'm telling you all about this is because you'll have to work with such data in the duration of the hackathon. Though the sequencing principles vary between different sequencing approaches, to mention the main difference, Illumina specializes in short redraw sequence data, while PacBio focuses on long redraw sequence data and the yield per flow cell of Oxford nanotechnology is much higher than packed bio because each nanopore can sequence multiple molecules. Now let's briefly discuss about the types of metagenomic sequencing techniques. One is whole metagenome sequencing or shotgun metagenome sequencing that is relatively new and powerful sequencing approach that provides insights into community biodiversity and function. The other one is 16S amplicon sequencing. That is recently developed technique and is widely used to study microbiome directly in its environment. Such metagenomic sequencing focuses on 16S or 18S ribosomal RNA that has to be amplified with PCR amplification. The 16S gene sequences contain hypervariable regions, which are also known as HVRs, that provides species-specific signature sequences useful for bacterial identification. The benefit of amplification is tied to the nature of sequencing read length, which can maximize effective output from affordable sequencing technologies. To account for the diversity of such sequences, 
They are usually combined into operational taxonomic units or OTUs, which can be used to classify group of closely related individuals. OTUs are formed from groups of closely related genomic sequences, and they represent a cluster or a phylogenetic clade that has a meaningful abundance in a sample. Such OTU sequences are annotated by mapping onto a reference database, such as that of Ribosomal Database Project, Green Genes, or the Silva database. And such databases contain taxonomic information for the domains of bacteria, archaea, and the eukarya based primarily on phylogenies for small subunit RRNAs, 16S for prokaryotes and 18S for eukaryotes. Let's now talk a little bit about the practical analysis approach to analyze metagenomic data on the T-BioInfo platform. One such analysis is processing the data to pipeline that is based on running a number of programs, including data to APE and PhiloSeq algorithms. Data2 generates amplicon sequence variants or the ASV tables, which are similar to OTU tables, but detailed in that they tabulate the number of identical amplicon sequence variants from different samples. Microbial studies utilizing data to provide high resolution, accurately reconstructed amplicon sequences that improve the detection of sample diversity and the biological variants. The data to pipeline implements a complete pipeline to turn the paired and fastq files from the sequencer into merged denoised chimera free inferred sample sequencing. By using the data to algorithm, fine scale variations are identified and a quality based model is produced. We will end up with merged denoised chimera free inferred sample sequences. Data to analysis will filter input data, dereplicate, providing abundances of unique sequence data and an ASV table, a denoised high resolution output file. The results obtained from the data to pipeline includes a microbial abundance taxonomy bar plot, a relative and a proportionate plot indicating the richness and abundance of taxa identified, phyloseq uh, plots based on the OTU abundance, 2D and 3D PCA plots to visualize the cluster separation between the samples of the data set, Alpha diversity measure that summarizes the structure of an ecological community with respect to its richness. Now let's talk about the Kind2 pipeline. The Kind2 pipeline is an open source bioinformatics pipeline for performing microbiome analysis for, from raw DNA sequencing data. The Kind is designed to take users from raw sequencing data generated on the Illumina or other platforms through publication quality graphics and statistics. This includes demultiplexing and quality filtering, OTU picking, taxonomic assignment, and phylogenetic reconstruction and diversity analysis, along with visualizations. Kind has been applied to study to studies based on billions of sequences from tens of thousands of samples. The advances in the analysis of amplicon sequence datasets have introduced a methodological shift in how research teams investigate microbial biodiversity, away from sequence identity-based clustering producing operational taxonomic units or the OTUs to denoising methods producing amplicon sequence variants. Kind2 plugins in the pipeline on the TBioInfo server exist for latest generation tools for sequence quality control from different sequencing platforms, Data2 and Dblur. Taxonomy assignment and phylogenetic insertion, which quantitatively improves the result. The platform provides many interactive visualization tools, facilitating exploratory analysis and result reporting. Along with the data to pipeline results, which included taxonomic bar plots, PCA, and alpha diversity measure, Kind2 pipeline also provides lists of results that you could see here on the screen, which includes the alpha diversity box plot, which determines if an environment has been sequenced to a sufficient depth through evenness group significance and faith group significance plots. 
It includes kind to alpha rare fraction, which illustrates the number of samples in each group. Kind to remove eukaryota generates an interactive bar plot of taxa present in the samples. It also includes group significance plots, which include alpha and beta group significance, and kind to core matrix, an area of alpha and beta diversity measures that can be generated with a single command of kind to. The kind diversity core matrix phylogenetic command produces both phylogenetic and non-phylogenetic measures, as well as alpha and beta diversity measures. And then we have the core matrix phylogenetic command that generates a plot, as you can see here on the extreme uh, right side, that includes the jacquard distance, that includes the qualitative measure of community dissimilarity, breakutus distance, which includes, again, a quantitative measure of community dissimilarity, unweighed unifrag distance, and weighed unifrag distance. I hope you will now agree with me that analysis isn't always complicated. There is a logic behind it. And once you understand the logic behind it, then it is easy for you to understand. Today, what I presented was a very brief overview of the flow from the metagenomic study to what are the various sequencing types and then what are the different analysis types and showcase you the resources that you could use during your duration of hackathon and utilize. So now to discuss how the resources could be used effectively to build a solution or a product of your own, I would like to pass it on to our CEO, Mr. Ilya Brodsky. Uh, 